In a world filled with magic and mystery, no other institution can compare to the Alzano Imperial Magic Academy, which houses some of the nation's most promising students. However, their favorite professor was substituted by Glenn Radars, a complete scrub with zero motivation. Because of his laziness and complete disinclination to teach, he earned the ire of his many promising students, whose magical journey may be in jeopardy because of their good-for-nothing teacher. There is, however, more to Glenn than meets the eye, and he is beginning to show that now as he tries his damnedest to protect his students from a sudden extremist attack. Even after incurring multiple wounds, Glenn soldiers on to find Rumia with a concerned Sistine following after him, but his injuries all become too much for him and he soon falls to his knees. Despite Sistine's attempts to heal him, Glenn falls unconscious. Later in the day, Glenn wakes up on the hallway floor with Sistine next to him. His wristband beeps as Celica calls to check up on them and inform him that the teleportation circle has been shut down. She still needs to learn who the accomplice is too, but what's bugging her the most is how the barriers have been set to keep anyone from leaving. This makes Glenn realize that the extremists didn't destroy the teleportation circle. It's much more likely that they rewrote the destination for their escape. Before leaving to go to the circle's location, Glenn thanks the sleeping Sistine. At the tall tower, Glenn comes face to face with the accomplice. Shockingly, the traitor is none other than the homeroom professor who suddenly disappeared, Yui Lyson. It turns out that this oh-so-beloved man is just someone that the organization planted in the academy. Glenn is ready to cast his fool spell on him, but before he does, Yui explains the situation. In 10 minutes, the rewrite of the teleportation circle will be complete, and Rumia will be transported to their organization. At the same time, sacrifice, the white magic ritual Yui already finished, will activate. This ritual will devour Yui's soul to generate mana and blow up the academy. Well, thanks for the info dump, my guy! So now, Glenn must undo the teleportation circle by Finding Rumia to keep Sacrifice from activating. Though he barely has any mana left, Glenn swiftly writes the runes with his blood to undo the circle. The circle comes undone, layer by layer. However, after the fourth layer, Glenn starts coughing up blood and he falls on his face. Damn it, he ran out of blood before he could undo the last layer. A desperate Rumia tries to reach out to her professor only for the circle to block her hand, but that's not gonna stop her. If her useless instructor refused to give up, she'll keep going too. She eventually manages to push her hand out of the circle just enough to reach her professor. Rumia pours her mana into Glenn, effectively increasing his power through her special ability as an amplifier. With his refreshed mana, Glenn promptly undoes the last layer, unleashing a force strong enough to be seen throughout the academy. After all that's said and done, the rage in Glenn's heart continues burning bright. He goes to punch Yui to Kingdom Frick, leaving the man to admit defeat. Soon enough, Sistine arrives at the tower to see a sleeping Glenn on Rumia's lap. A few days pass and Glenn is up on the roof is Celica. He can't believe Rumia is the Princess Ermiana, who was said to have died of an illness three years ago. Celica explains how if the whole nation found out a royal like Rumia is an amplifier, there would be an uproar. That's just how persecuted people with special abilities are. In the academy, only Celica and the headmaster know the truth about Rumia. Ah, oh, well, Glenn doesn't really give a hoot about that. Fair enough, but what made him decide to stay there as a professor? With a smile, Glenn says he wants to see what his students will go on to achieve, and that, folks, is how Glenn transformed from being a sorry excuse of a substitute professor into a reliable instructor beloved by his students. Glenn always had it in him, he just needed a little push. Today at Alzano Imperial Magic Academy, Class 2 is spending home room trying to figure out their roster for this year's magic competition. To Sistine Fable's frustration, no one is interested in participating. Even the charming Rumia Tinjal's encouragement falls on deaf ears. As Gibble Wisdon points out, they'd rather not disgrace themselves when the Queen pays a visit to the Academy during the competition. Fortunately, Glenn arrives in the nick of time to save the day. He takes the list of events from Sistine, aka White Cat. After a quick glance at the paper, he proudly announces announces that he'll use his decisive judgment as their charismatic instructor to settle everything. His words, not mine. What's more, with Glenn's help, Class 2 will definitely achieve victory. Glenn immediately proves he isn't just all bark and no bite as he easily fills in the roster. To everyone's surprise, he's making sure the entire class gets to participate. For each student in the lineup, Glenn has a good reason for assigning them to a specific event. Sistine smiles at Rumia, realizing their lazy but dependable instructor has been watching them closely. Of course, when it comes to 
Glenn, there's always something more than meets the eye. The real reason he's so enthusiastic about the contest is simply that, well, he's broke. Headmaster Rick Walken can't issue his pay in advance, while his mentor, Salika Arfania, refuses to help him out with any financial problems of his own making. So when Glenn heard from the headmaster that he could receive a special bonus if his class won the magic competition, well, you know how it went. Gibble snaps Glenn out of his scheming by sharing his thoughts about the roster. In contrast to what Glenn has outlined, most classes simply pick their top students. Almost instantly, Glenn reconsiders his game plan now that he knows he can use the students more than once. But before he can pipe up, Sistine speaks on his behalf and shuts Gibble's idea down, much to the instructor's dismay. Later that afternoon, while Glenn laments over the missed opportunity, he hears students of class 1 and class 2 arguing on the practice field. Thankfully, the laid-back teacher arrives in time to prevent things from getting too heated. At the same time, class 1 instructor Hallie Astry demands that class 2 scram. Glenn has to compose himself after Professor Hallie insults his class's lineup for the competition. To prove his confidence in class 2's victory, the charismatic instructor bets three months' worth of his salary, which he almost immediately regrets. Seeing this as a big fat W, Hallie gladly accepts the gamble. Before Glenn can grovel and retract the wager, Sistine butts in. She threatens to report Hallie for unreasonably driving their class out of the practice field. Glenn's knees continue to quiver as Sistine sets the bet in stone. Well, that's that. No point in trying to wriggle out, Glenn. With a competition only a week away, Glenn spends all his free time training his students. Despite his ulterior motives, Glenn does have the chops to hone his students' skills. Sistine and Ramia observe Glenn all the while, with Ramia noting how cool their instructor is. Being the tsundere she is, Sistine doesn't fully agree with her adoptive sister. Later that night, Ramia reflects on a memory while clasping her empty locket. That time, Glenn rescued her after she was abandoned by her mother, the queen. Upon hearing Sistine approach, Ramia quickly hides the trinket. At the dinner table, Leonard Fable apologizes to his daughters as he and his wife can't watch the competition because of work. Leonard can't help but dote on how understanding his daughters are, prompting Ileana Fable to put her husband in a headlock. On the way to the academy, Queen Alicia VII gazes longingly at her locket containing a picture of her and a young Rumia. She can't wait to see her daughter again, even from afar. Her servant, Eleanor Charlotte, suggests she swap her pendant for another necklace. The queen must avoid drawing attention to her connection with a dead second princess. The day of the magic competition finally arrives. As soon as the event officially commences, the queen waves to the clapping crowd. Sadly, a heartbroken Rumia notices she isn't wearing her locket. Onto the first event, class 2 ranks third in the flying race. Glenn hides his surprise by pretending to know what he's doing, which is enough to convince class 2 they have a chance to win. As the competition proceeds, the class 2 students prove more formidable than they seem, making it to the top 4 in magical sniping. Victory is followed by another victory as their representative for speed deciphering, stomps on the competition, Glenn gleefully looks at the rankings, where Class 2 sits third overall. Even though the instructor won't admit it out loud, he's truly proud of his class for exceeding his expectations. The next event involves mental defense. Before it begins, returning champion Jail Wolfhart of Class 5 advises Rumia to drop out, but the kind girl smiles fondly at him, determined to win. On the Observer's deck, Gibble speculates that Glenn chose Rumia for this event so she could be sacrificed like a pawn. After all, the girl's sole talent lies in healing magic. Sistine is in disbelief, and Glenn is quick to back up his decision, stating he knows Ramia has nerves of steel. To start the event, the Academy's authority on mental manipulation, Count Zest, appears before the contestants. Class 1 student immediately falls asleep in the first round. This is part of their tactics. He's merely a strategic pawn to conserve their forces. The commentator brings attention to Ramia as the only girl in the event. This is enough to reveal the Count's questionable attitude towards women as he sloppily tastes his wand. Round after round, contestants continue dropping, especially after the Privy Count employs his specialty, high-speed chanting. It's so powerful that even the audience is affected. With everyone else out, only Jail and Rumia remain, much to the surprise of many. This time, Count Zest uses Mind Break, one of the most dangerous spells that can break the target's mind and render them unconscious. Everyone cheers as Jail and Rumia withstand the spell, prompting the redhead to compliment the girl. However, as Count Zest increases the force of his magic, Rumia falls to her knees. She still would have been hell-bent and continues if not for Glenn announcing her forfeiture. But there's no need to admit defeat as they find out Jail is unconscious on his feet, which means Rumia is the winner. Watching Rumia celebrate with her class, Queen Alice can't help but smile. Her daughter is blessed with caring friends and a trustworthy mentor. Though the queen states that she's satisfied, Salika, one of her good friends, wonders out loud if observing Rumia from afar truly is enough for her. Eleanor chimes in, encouraging the queen to be honest with herself. Alice merely smiles and returns her gaze to Rumia, while she contemplates her words.
points. As the magic competition continues, Class 2 climbs up to first place. The entire class cheers, though Glenn can't help but clutch his empty stomach. Glenn's former colleagues from the Imperial Court Mage Corps observe the proceedings in the shadows. Albert Fraser tugs at Rail Rayford's hair to stop her from settling a score with Glenn. Lunchtime rolls in, and Glenn looks longingly at all the food shared among the students. As he is about to leave, Lynn Titus of Class 2 approaches him, uncertain of her skills. Lynn wants to switch places with someone else for the transmutation event, but Glenn knows how much the girl loves transmutation, so he naturally doesn't let Lynn back down. Instead, the instructor reviews the self-illusion spell with his student. He demonstrates his magic by transforming into Rumia. Finally, Glenn advises her to find better material to clearly envision what she wants to change into. Even if Lynn fails, she has Glenn to protect her from anyone who'll try to blame her. With that, the brunette promises to do her best. Before Glenn can revert to his original form, Sistine mistakes him for Rumia and asks him to accompany her for lunch. The captivating sight of the picnic basket filled with delicious sandwiches tests Glenn's self-control. He can't let himself stoop so low that he'd trick a student out of lunch. Glenn's stomach pushes him to give in, but before he can take a bite, the real Rumia approaches them. Sistine dispels the illusion, revealing Glenn, who returns the sandwich and leaves, but not before Sistine pummels him into the air with her special gale blow. Glenn lands on his head in a nearby forest. Finding a bench, the browbeaten instructor looks to the sky and contemplates his awful behavior. But lucky for Glenn, Rumia's got him the delectable goodies and he wolfs it all down in seconds. Glenn drowns in awe of the amazingly good food, wondering who made it, but Rumia's been tasked to keep that information a secret. Now that he's stuffed, Glenn motions for them to head back, only to be stopped by the queen herself. He doesn't notice at first, but upon making eye contact with the smiling royal, he instantly goes down on one knee out of reverence. To Glenn's surprise, Alice apologizes for his expulsion from the Imperial Mage Corps, especially since he devoted himself to the nation. Flustered, Glenn says there's no need to lower her head to such a failure like him. He then inquires why the queen is out here without her guards. Alice turns to Rumia, greeting her as Ermiana. The queen's eyes light up with fondness as she asks about her daughter's well-being. For Alice, talking to Ermiana after all this time feels like a dream. As Alice places her hand on her chest, Rumia remembers that her mother isn't wearing their matching locket. Alice reaches out to her daughter, but Rumia pushes her away with harsh words, denying she's the princess. With that, Alice apologizes for the mistake with a gracious smile. Rumia excuses herself and desperately flees from the presence of the queen. Saddened but not surprised by her daughter's reaction, Alice turns to leave. Before she departs, the queen asks Glenn to take care of Rumia. However, upon returning to the event, the queen is startled when her own guards raise their blades to restrain her. Leading this armed force is her personal guard, Zealous Dragheart. Albert observes Her Majesty's predicament and notes the peculiar behavior of the Imperial Guard, particularly General Commander Zealous. Meanwhile, the competitors press on, with Class 2 seizing another win. The crowd goes wild, but all that's in Glenn's mind is Rumia. Concerned about her sister's absence, Sistine approaches Glenn, who then tells her all that transpired. Glenn then decides to look for Rumia, leaving Sistine in charge of the class. Thanks to the yummy sandwiches, he can search for her all day. Sistine can't help but blush after knowing Glenn enjoyed eating the food she prepared. Glenn finds Rumia sitting alone on a bench, looking wistfully at her locket. Since Rumia is aware that her teacher knows she's the queen's daughter, she asks for advice. Rumia understands disposing of her was necessary for the country's future. After all, she's one of the gifted, a ticking time bomb, but part of her can't forgive the queen for doing so. Still, Rumia wants to call her mom and hug her one more time. To Glenn, humans are bound to regret whatever decision they make. That's why choosing your path based on your true feelings will reduce the pain you experience. Even with the charismatic instructor's wise words, Rumia still can't understand what she truly feels. Glenn then tells her about his time as a mage in the Imperial Academy. Due to the nature of his job, Glenn saw the queen quite often. She'd always be wearing the same locket as Rumia's. This makes the girl more open to hearing Glenn's suggestion of telling the queen what's in her heart. Rumia admits she's scared and wants Glenn to accompany her to the queen, but they have no chance to do that as the Imperial Guard suddenly surrounds them. The guards charge Rumia with conspiracy to assassinate the queen, and the punishment? Execution. Glenn intervenes, his anger only rising as the officers claim their orders come directly from the queen. As he makes no move to step aside, the guards threaten him with the same punishment as Rumia. The docile girl kneels on one knee to surrender, asking the guards to spare her instructor. Glenn tries to argue, but one of the guards knocks him out. The guards have Rumia tied to a tree, warning her to stay still to make the execution quick. Rumia accepts her fate, thinking the queen must have wanted to speak to her earlier for her final goodbyes. After all, she was supposed to be dead long ago. But Rumia managed to live three more years and make wonderful memories. She squeezes her eyes shut, waiting for the inevitable blow. But after hearing a sudden commotion, Rumia sees the guards lying flat on the ground. Glenn loses 
the rope binding her, believing there's more behind this quote-unquote execution, they need to speak to the queen to clear things up. As more guards approach them, Glenn carries Rumia in his arms and chants a spell to help them escape. Glenn thinks of contacting Celica to help them speak to the queen, but his mentor's immediate answer is that she's unable to do or say anything. Celica repeats this statement and avoids answering Glenn's questions. Before Celica hangs up, she tells Glenn he's the only one who can remedy the situation. Celica asks him to concentrate and find some way to come before the queen. That's easier said than done, with the queen surrounded by well-trained guards as well as General Commander Zealous. Glenn doesn't even get to think of a strategy when his old colleagues suddenly approach them, with Rail immediately going in with her sword. Back at the school, the magic competition continues, with Class 2 taking the lead. But Celica's mind is elsewhere. The queen's servant, Eleanor, revealed herself as a member of the Researchers of Divine Wisdom, an organization of heretic mages. They've placed a cursed necklace on the queen, and if they want to save her majesty before sundown, Rumia must die. In the alleyway, Glenn and Rumia have survived Rail's attack, but the girl summons another weapon to continue her onslaught. Not even Glenn's ice spell can deter her. Glenn's eyes widen as he sees Albert pointing his finger at them. Close combat via alchemy plus long-range sniping magic? He doesn't stand a chance. Thankfully, Albert was actually planning on hitting Rail. The calm and collected guy nonchalantly greets Glenn, who's at a loss for words. With things all cleared up, Glenn introduces them to Rumia as members of the Imperial Court Mage Corps Special Forces. Albert fills in Glenn on what's happening. The Imperial Guards have restrained the Queen and are acting independently to eliminate the former princess. Meanwhile, Salika stays glued to her seat. Even though she can handle a few guards alone, this just further confuses Glenn. On the upside, he won't have to fight his old colleagues, so Glenn asks for their help. He's confident in Salika's instructions to come before the Queen, as she's the greatest mage in the continent, and this is enough for Albert to trust Glenn as well. Returning to the contest, Class 1 has advanced, pushing Class 2 back into second place. Glenn's students wonder where he is, but Albert and Rail suddenly approach their class. Albert explains he was left in command of them as Glenn got entangled with something urgent. The teacher's final message to his students? Win. Please? Understandably, Class 2 is wary of these strangers, but Rail grabs Sistine's hands and this is enough to convince her. Sistine reminds the class that if they lose without the professor around, he'll surely rub it in their faces. That's enough to get everyone fired up. The next event, transmutation, is crucial for Class 2's hopes of winning. If they lose, their hopes for victory will be dashed. As Class 1's contestant transforms into a splendid dragon, Lynn begins to lose heart. But Albert calms her down, using the same words Glenn said during lunchtime. This gives Lynn all the confidence she needs to transform into the Angel of Time, beating Class 1 by receiving a perfect score. Class 2 continues with another W in the next event, resulting in a tie between them and Class 1. Hallie doesn't like that one bit. The magic competition is down to the final event that will ultimately determine the winner, Magic Duels. Two matches have finished, with Class 1 and Class 2 winning one each. With that, it's all up to Sistine to win the final bout and secure Class 2's victory. White Cat struggles at first, but using an altered spell called Storm Wall, Class 1's representative is blown out of the stage. Class 2 is the winner of the magic competition. During the award ceremony, Albert and Rail fill in for Glenn and receive the medal from the Queen. With no moment to lose, Glenn and Rumia dispel self-illusion, revealing their true selves. At the same time, the real Albert and Rail face the Imperial Guard outside the Academy. Before Zealous and his men can capture Glenn and Rumia, Salika casts an isolation barrier. Glenn asks the Queen to stop the senseless violence, but she doesn't respond. Instead, Zealous steps forward to protect the Queen. As time runs out, Alice gives her order to execute Rumia, even saying she never once loved the child. This brings Rumia to her knees, and Glenn merely looks around, bewildered. Glenn knows the Queen is lying, but can't understand why. However, as Glenn looks into the Queen's sorrowful eyes, it hits him. A conditional cursed necklace. Glenn springs forward to remove the chain, only for Zealous to stab his hand. As the two men struggle, the Queen takes off the necklace on her own. Zealous is in disbelief, for as they know, removing the pendant will activate the curse. The only way to free the Queen is to kill Rumia, right? But Glenn reveals he used his original spell, the Fool's World, to seal the curse and prevent it from activating. Now, Alice is free to speak and retract her lies. In reality, Alice only said those hurtful words to Rumia, so Glenn could figure out the curse. Overwhelmed with guilt, Alice runs to embrace Rumia and apologize. Rumia cries with the Queen as she finally gets to call her mom once again. Somewhere in town, Albert and Rail confront Eleanor, the heretic mage. She reveals their organization needs Rumia for the mysterious Akashic records, and in a blink of an eye, Eleanor escapes from the Imperial mages.
Before the sun sets, Albert and Rail say goodbye to Glenn, who thanks them for helping out. Rumia runs to meet her instructor, happy that she's reconciled with her mom. Everything worked out so well thanks to Glenn, the competition and the queen and the survival of the former princess. But of course, Glenn denies he did anything of value. They finally make it to the restaurant where Class 2 awaits them. To Glenn's horror, they've spent three months worth of his salary plus the reward money and the celebration. His threat of an extinction ray is received with cheers. Although Glenn will surely remain broke for the next three months, Months, one thing's for sure, he truly has transformed into a reliable, lovable, and charismatic instructor. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.